Inverting a set means to flip it upside down, or in other words, to reverse its interval pattern. In this episode of the Set Theory Simplified series, we'll be going over what inversions of sets are and how it applies to set theory. The first thing to address is terminology. By saying inversion, we're not referring to something like first and second position of the major triad. Those are modes. Instead, our definition of inversion relates to its meaning in conventional language, which basically means flipping. When Jacob Collier talks about negative harmony, he's referring precisely to inversion. We're avoiding the trendy name and misleading definition and sticking with the conventional meaning of inversion, which means to flip something upside down. To visualize an inversion, we mark the pitches of a set on the pitch circle and then flip them across a line of symmetry. The line of symmetry is a straight line we create that goes directly across the pitch circle. It can be drawn on any pitch or directly between pitches. To invert our set, we simply move the pitches to an equal distance from the line of symmetry on the other side of the line of symmetry. If a pitch lies on the line of symmetry, it doesn't move at all. If a pitch is one space away from the line of symmetry, it will move to the other side of the line of symmetry one space away. A pitch two spaces away would move to the mirroring position two spaces away on the other side of the line of symmetry, and so on until all the pitches are plotted on the other side. Now that we've inverted the set, we can compare the inverted version to the original set by transposing the inverted set back to C. With our C major chord example, we reveal that inverting a major chord gives us a minor chord. The C major triad doesn't necessarily invert to any particular minor chord, as we could theoretically draw the line of symmetry in other positions and get many different resulting minor chords, but overall what is revealed is that the set of all major chords is inversionally related to the set of all minor chords. In other words, major and minor chords are mirror images of each other that therefore have a unique relationship with each other. The visualization of inversions on the pitch circle is good for understanding the concept in general, but practically for me, I prefer to figure out inversions on a piano by simply reversing the direction of the interval pattern of a set. Let's take the dominant 7th chord as an example with the interval pattern plus 4, 3, 3, 2. To invert this chord, we turn the plus sign into a minus sign and move down for every number in the interval pattern. This means we would begin at the same starting point and instead move down four semitones, down three, down three, down two, to invert the set. This gives us a D half diminished seventh chord, or minor seven flat five. This means that dominant seventh chords and half diminished seventh chords are inversions of each other. We can think of inversionally related sets as married couples. They share a similar quality since they contain the same intervals, yet in some ways are opposites. Like most spouses, they share the same family name in addition to having their own name that distinguishes them from each other. Next episode I will explain how labeling sets works, but for the purpose of this video, it's important to remember that sets that are inversion pairs are labeled with the same number but then marked with either an A or a B. For example, the major triad can be called 3.2A and the minor triad labeled 3.2B. Same number, different letter. Much like how some sets don't belong to families of modes, some sets don't have a spouse. These sets don't have inversion partners because they invert onto themselves, meaning these sets are symmetrical. Let's use the minor pentatonic scale as an example again. Can you locate where we would have to draw the line of symmetry in order for the pitches to invert onto themselves? The line can be drawn through F and B for the pitches to map onto each other, meaning that the pentatonic set is symmetrical and has no inversion partner. Sets with repetitive interval patterns like the diminished and augmented sets are of course symmetrical as well. In fact, these sets have multiple lines of symmetry. Symmetry in sets is an important property of sets that will come up more and more in future discussions. In summary, sets that are inversionally related contain the same intervals, but their interval patterns are oriented in the opposite direction. We can visualize an inversion on the pitch circle, or we can reverse the direction of the interval pattern to derive the inversion pair. Inversion pairs have the same label number, but are differentiated by either an A or a B beside their label. Some sets are symmetrical and don't have an inversion pair. 
What are your thoughts and questions on inversions? Let me know in the comments, like, subscribe, and support me on Patreon.